and welcome to MM Design or mm, Design. My name is Maria and on this channel we talk about fashion, we talk about trends and we talk about sometimes about the system, sustainability, sust sustainability, sustainability of fashion and today we're going to be talking about the trends for fall winter 2022, particularly the bags what we see on the runways, what you should look out for when you're shopping, maybe thrifting, that's the part of sustainability we're talking about, or maybe buying a already pre-loved luxury item. Going back to the trends, we see a lot of the classical bags that every brand has, kind of a historic bag, like maybe the classic Chanel flap bag, or maybe it could be the Gucci bamboo handle, or maybe it's the Gucci Jackie bag, maybe it's the Lady Dior bag. So we do see those on the runways. Of course, every house is gonna keep making their bags, but making them a little bit more now, a little bit more fresh, maybe using the trendy colors, or maybe going for a trendier print, maybe changing a little bit to suit the today's client. Digging up the archival, items and making them fresh. All right, you guys, so right now we're going to be talking about probably more of a silhouettes, what kind of silhouettes were present on the runways of different types of bags. Of course, we have a huge range of sizes. What you're looking to use this bag for? Is it for travel? Is it for maybe going to the gym? Is it for everyday kind of thing? Is it more of a luxurious kind of a special occasion bag? So we're going to take it all look at a lot of them. So the first one we're going to be looking at is more like a gym bag of sorts and I'm calling it the bowling bag because it looks like a bowling bag. All right, we have some of those in Gucci. So they're kind of more of on a bigger side and they have kind of a zipper on the top. They have those little handles. Uh, we also see them in Burberry, a lot of those more on a larger side. Louis Vuitton also had more of those present and Miu Miu as well having more of a smaller side. Prada as well. As you can see, a bowling ball probably would not fit in there, but it is in that kind of a shape with a zipper on the top. Dior Rock, we see it in a variety of kind of classy levels as well as sizes. I think this is a great bag for gym goers. And yeah, let's go into the shopper bag. Another one of those really big ones. We see them more structured like in Gucci show, some having prints, some not really. Alexander McQueen having a really bright shopper bag like this. Givenchy as well. We also have a little bit more of a sloppier version of that in Acti Studios. And of course the book tote from Christian Dior, the classic. Sparkle, we see so much shine and sparkle on the runways this time around, whether it's part of the garment or maybe it's the bag. We see a lot of metallized material on the runways, either gold, silver, we also see more of a colored versions of that and in different bags. So this is not just one bag, it's kind of the finish of the bag. Lots of metallics out there for sure. A lot of different shows like Moschino, Mar Mark Jacobs, Ula Johnson, as well as Fendi, Ambush, Diesel even. Yes, I went as low as Diesel. And we also have more like crystallized embellishments on bags like Acne Studios. We also see a little strap from Isabel Morant. And of fully crystallized items like in Brox and Bonco shows. There are so much crystal, so much Swarovski diamonds, anything bedazzled basically. So 2020 is more looking like the early 2000s where we have crystals everywhere. We also have some of the beads, more like beaded bags like in Chanel and Givenchy. And of course, yeah, more crystals, off-white, lawn bond, a lot, a lot of really bright and shimmery things. I am really dying to get my hands on the Prada bag, you know, that the hobo 
bag with the little crystals on it. It's like on my to shop for list, but as I don't really have almost any luxury bags, I'm, I'm really hesitant to buy that kind of a bag. As part of the embellishments, kind of sparkle, we also have spikes. We have that in Gucci and Alexander McQueen. It adds some sparkle, but it's kind of on an edgy side. So if you're like that style more, then here we go. Just think of a party statement bag anything shiny, anything shimmery, that's the way to go. As I mentioned, the hobo bag. Gucci, of course, they're gonna have their classic Jackie bag, and it has that hobo kind of esque style, Fendi, a lot of bags in that style, Givenchy as well. It is very popular at the moment, and it seems to be going strong into the next season as well. If you have it around, dig it out. It's great to wear, but bags are very personal. And if you like a certain style, then just continue wearing it. The purpose of these videos are more like to show you what other items there are. And if you like them, maybe introduce them into your style. That will kind of spark your imagination to make more outfits out of what you already have. But here we are. We have this hobo bag in variety of sizes. Uh, if you need like a smaller one for the city, here you are. If you need a bigger one to maybe go to the gym in, here we also have some bigger sizes. We have some of these in Louis Vuitton, Miu Miu, as well as Off-White having a lot of them also in different sizes as well. All right, you guys, so Settle Bag is a very classic bag. Gucci is one of those brands that had a lot of them. We also have them in Balma. Once again, varying sizes. So Settle Bag is a shape of kind of a more of a circular a bottom, or maybe it has circular edges on it and a flap over it. It is very similar to the hobo bag as the hobo also has that curved bottom, but it does have a flap unlike the hobo bag. So we have a variety of these in Versace in different colors, uh, not as bright as I thought that Versace was gonna go for, but pretty cool nevertheless. Michael Kors, Chanel having very classic versions of that there as well in different colors. We also have Eula Johnson having more of a belt bag in it, Moschino, even Dior having a few of those. So when we think about the hobo bag as well as the saddle bag, they have a more of a circular silhouette shapes and that's what we're going for. Anyways, let's go into the micro bag trends. Still see them um, maybe on a little bit of a bigger side, but not quite. Like in Fendi, we have some very tiny little ones that are more look like a keychain of some sort. And I always thought, why would you ever, what would fit in there? And then I went on to Versace site and I saw them and apparently they are not just like a little bag. Some of them are like headphone little charging station. So that's pretty cool. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But the only thing about it is once the style of the headphone changes, which happens very regularly, you won't be able to use it anymore. So it is very time limited item. Chanel having those little ones. I've seen Yves Saint Laurent, I believe, having like a lipstick bag or like it had a compact inside and that's it. So for those, that's really interesting. We also see more of a like raw leather types in Ula Johnson. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I like them when there's multiple of them, when they're more like layered. It takes away from it being a bag to more of being an accessory. We also have the mini bags in Valentino, probably like barely big enough to put your phone in and maybe a pair of keys. It is fun to kind of play around with the different sizes Sizes, like a contrast like in this off-white huge dress and hat and carrying that tiny little bag it is more of a fashion statement all right now we're going into the 
other side of the spectrum having really huge enormous bags and these are great when you're traveling somewhere maybe you need a gym bag of some sort but if you're going for that chic look and having that huge enormous bag with you it can be a hassle like you need to stuff it in order for it to look decent like you can't just have an empty bag with a phone on the bottom yeah i don't know i don't really like to have like an enormous bag with me it's like things get lost in there really easily but here we are balenciaga even having more like a garbage bag situation i wonder if they actually do sell those bags as like garbage bags or it was just for the show Givenchy and Off-White having that enormous, enormous box and the, like huge backpacks, like they're twice the size of the models. Dolce Gabbana having that hobo bag, like it is crazy enormous. Uh, a per probably a person could fit in there. Alex also having more of a little bit of a shopper bag on a bigger scale, but here we are. A total contrast to a structured bag, designers also went into all in into the more of a slouchy, squishy bag, the kind of bags that will expand to consume all your daily essentials, and they can also collapse into something much smaller, like, yes, they are much more comfortable for traveling because they kind of make up any size that you need to squish them into, uh, but yeah, not my favorite once again. Fold over. So we see a lot of kind of almost sandwich bags that kind of like are rolled or like folded over. So there are a clutch type of a bag that basically just fold. It is more of a softer side. So if you have a kind of a lazy, uh, outfits and you like it go ahead all right you guys and the bucket bags are still strong we have a few of them in different shows and they do kind of fall into those slouchy bag trends we see them more of the meshy variety rather than a full-on shape of a bucket bag all right we have puffers as bags <laughs> so we see them being kind of stitched through having them more voluminous and kind of a soft kind of like a cloud bag but a little bit on a more structured side like you can see it in versace here um Givenchy having a backpack like stitched through with like a puffer we also see it in a balenciaga uh, okay i don't mind it at all it's not like a furry thing so i'm okay with it and we also see more of that those the cloud bag the pierogi bags that are they're still present i'm not the biggest fan of them i like i feel in five years they're gonna be so disappointing <laughs> And yeah, I don't know, I, I per, as I said, I prefer to have more of a structured bag, but here we are. It is, it like, it still looks like a little lunch bag as well, like just not folded, but more like gathered up in, in a bunch. Uh, but yeah, Jill Sanders, uh, Loe also having those, it, it is a different version. It, it's not quite the same as the cloud bag, more of a bucket bag, coming from Dolce Gabbana and a few more. A little bit of shapeless, maybe it would be a nice uh, contrasting thing if you're wearing a very structured outfit and having that as a contrast. If you're enjoying this content so far and you'd like to support me and my channel, all you need to do is like this video, maybe leave me a little message down below and subscribe if you're not already. Thank you. All right, moving on to color. This season, we see a lot of color. Look, I'm dressed in color, and that doesn't really happen often. We see a lot of different colors on the runways. We have Alexander McQueen, Balenciaga, having a weird bag that looks like shoes. I wonder if you can also wear them and they'll still be functional. We see bags being more of a color pop, like in Fendi, or maybe they are being monochromatic all the way along colorful bags are so much fun i really like when there is a the bag is the statement color and you can also play around with it in valentino having everything identical color that is such a fashion statement but it may be a little bit difficult to achieve so basically if you find a bag in a color that you love 
why not get it? It's not super close to the face where if the color is not your color, it won't make you look weird. And you can pair it with so much things, with neutral items as well. If you just want to dabble into color, I think bags and accessories are a perfect place to start with. It's not that scary. All right, another one is having a matching big to your outfit trend so we see a lot of it in chanel having like the same tweed as the garment itself or maybe going for the same color same texture it might be a little pricey to buy a chanel jacket and a, a bag in the same print but i think it's pretty cool versace also having that maybe more of like in colors a uh, burberry also having the same pattern on the bag as well as the garment kind of their classic check print as well as more of a stripey one we also see max mara having kind of a monochromatic outfit having the bag the same color as the entire outfit along with it some are a little bit of a maybe different texture but the same color nevertheless michael kors of course having this exactly the same color bags as the outfits we also see this in moschino we also see uh, the same pattern like all denim in diesel, uh, Varisa Vanessa having maybe the same print on the bag or having the same color as the entire outfit. We also see this in Dolce Gabbana. We also see this, yes, a lot, a lot of places. Furry. Furriness is still here. We see it in Ambush. We also see it in Brox and Bonko, show more having feathery stuff. Fendi had a few of the furry purses. Maybe it's like a little detail on the on the purse or the entire purse is made out of the furry substance. I'm not sure if it's real one or fake. I don't know, but I think like I really want it as an idea of like adding more texture to an outfit. But when I think about it logically, the fact that it's really hard to clean and purses are one of the dirtiest, apart from the shoes and the cell phone, they collect so much bacteria. I think about where I place my bag daily and it's not the cleanest things. Like you can't always find a hook in a washroom. I know that's really gross and I don't really know what else to say, but we still see it in a lot of shows like in Max Mara, Off White, Acne Studios, Brox and Bonko will also see that in Michael Kors. And of course, Dolce Gabbana had some very furry outfits that are a little bit too extra for my liking. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the geometric. So these are more structured, sometimes in a more of a unique shape than what we are used to. We also have just kind of a boxes like in Ambush. We also have, of course, the classic Louis Vuitton kind of a box type of a hand purse going back to their heritage. Those huge traveling cases became little purses in the woman's hands. We also see Brox and Blanco having like more of a spherical shape to the bag and also like just just the box sizes like in Moschino, Prada having their triangle. I really like it. I think I would really enjoy having a bag like this. I think it's gonna go a long way with Prada history. We also see Acne Studios having more of a different shape but yes i feel that structured bags are really easy items to have and they can uplift your outfit like whatever you're wearing if you're wearing sweatpants and a t-shirt if you have a structured bag it's gonna kind of increase it a little bit make you a little bit more polished if you're already polished it's just gonna kind of fry the same wave next one up is the accordion it's one another one of the more structured bags and it is a very easy to use as as everything is there. They're mostly used for kind of a business attire because you can put your paperwork in there. It's not going to get like ruined. Uh, you can put your laptop if it's big enough or more maybe your tablet of some sort. And I quite like it as it can keep your things organized and I need that in my life. So we see some of that in Hermes, in Alexander McQueen, having more of them in Fendi. 
Fendi, I think it's the like the most business-like bag that have ever been invented. <laughs> Having them in different colors, also like in a smaller sizes. Uh, I'm not sure like how much you need to organize in those like in Moschino and in Dior, but you never know. And if we're talking about clutches, we see a lot of very elongated bags. Not only actually clutches as well as some other ones, but more of that, like a baguette kind of a bag. It could also be maybe rolled up a little bit and still that longer version of a bag. We also still have a lot of chains on the bags, more of a statement ones like in Stella McCartney. And the last one of this video is, are these even bags? And they all came from Moschino. <laughs> this is just a little fun thing. So we have a nice little mirror that's also a bag, a teapot that is also a bag. We also have a couch that I have no idea how it is a bag. And yes all right you guys uh thank you very much for watching this video to the end i hope it brought you more understanding of what to look out for when you're shopping for a bag maybe you wanted to see uh, what you should buy in order to get the best investment i would go for more of a classical bags that you know won't go out of style like maybe the gucci bamboo bag or maybe a kind of a chanel flap i know that there's a lot of them out and about nowadays so I, I I don't know it's just completely up to you what your preferences are try not to go for super trendy items as really trendy items tend to go out of style while classical ones just remain there all the time sometimes a new trend can become a classical item but you kind of know you kind of know <laughs> But if you're shopping on a lower scale, like it's not too much of an investment or maybe you're thrifting, then going for those trendy items is a lot of fun. All right, you guys, thank you very much for watching once again. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave me a little nice message down below and subscribe if you're not already. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day and yeah, stay classy. Bye.